Welcome back to Ringworm, folks. This piece of property that I've lived on for a year and a half, not in a house or a cabin, like literally just out here in the woods. Most of you guys know that. I live in a tent out here just because I was curious to see how long it would be fun. And as soon as it's not fun anymore, I quit. I didn't know how long that would be. We're going on a year and a half. It's still incredibly fun. So I just keep building crap out here. I don't ever buy materials. I don't buy lumber. I just use a ch small chainsaw and a chainsaw mill. I make most of my lumber out of cedar. This is uh, mostly made out of pine. The poles are cedar trees. I don't know if you can tell. It's hard to tell from the warping of the lens, but all these corner pieces are cedars that are really bent just because I thought it'd be funny to do. The frame's all from a big pine tree and yeah, aspen roof, roof sheathing. So I just had my uh, little break, uh, ate too much peanut butter. I'm feeling a little bit ill, but I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to find something to mill up. I'm hoping, I'm thinking maybe I've got a, like a half a giant pine log that I could mill up to. Uh, I don't, if you don't know this about me, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if that's called a fascia or a barge board or something that goes right underneath the uh, roof sheathing there. I need to do that. I really want to get the shingles and tar paper on here just to get it dried in and then I can you know at night time I can leave my stuff underneath here and at least it won't get wet. Let's go see if we can find something to mill up for the uh, you know that board. Eight six so we need nine footers. I think it'd be kind of cool if I had a raw edge hanging down kind of like I did all the uh, rafters in here you can see there I didn't mill off the edges after I got this one board left over I think it was uh I milled it the wrong thickness but man it's like a 12 footer huge I could rip that down the middle that would be good for two and unfortunately that's two inches too short so I can't mill the rest of that up so hmm Oh, actually, I got uh, could use this uh, cedar log. It's been laying here. Unfortunately, it's been laying in the wet sawdust. But yeah, let's do that. It's longer than I need. I just cut the end off, cut exactly the length, so I don't end up milling more than I need to, and basically just get like two boards out of that. Whatever that was, an inch and a half. Okay, no more thinking, no more talking. Let's do it. if you can see the curve in this log I figured I'd do it sideways so that uh, when I open the two the two up it'll kind of go like this along the roof line it's not gonna be a whole lot maybe an inch or so but why not right Those look pretty good. And you know how much they cost? Nothing. Chainsaw milled lumber's free. Many people have reminded me how expensive lumber is right now. And how, <laughs> how many millions of dollars it would cost to build this up. I was paying for the lumber a lot.
Actually, since he's been sitting out in the sun for a month or so, I think I'm going to pretty him up a little bit. When it's uh, everything's battery powered out here or chainsaw powered, I always think about how many batteries it's going to take to do each project or each little step. Like just to, just to plane out both sides of these boards, not even to get them flat, but just to get the get all the weathered look out of the board. It's going to take a whole, probably a whole battery. I think it's worth it. It already looks cool. That's good enough. Give it some flavor. Before I put these up, I'm going to borax all of them you can, I don't know if you can see but there's some pretty big holes in this it looks like everything that was was eaten on it is gone now but this is uh two cups of borax to two gallons of water swirled in and uh, hopefully that'll keep anything new from munching on these it's pretty good Don't have easy access to everything up here, fasteners and chemicals and building supplies and whatever. So I make make do with what I've got around the area. This aspen is already dried out enough that it's uh, really cracky and splitty, so not really able to put nails in here, and you can't even can't put fasteners in the end grain. So it's the only way I can think to get this to stay on here. I think it looks pretty good. These are the two uh, boards I milled out of that log. And you can see how much I'm going to cut off here. Clearly that's a straight line by the time it gets to the middle. It's pretty narrow. And then back wide again. So I'm hoping, hoping it's enough variation that it looks like it hangs down like that. Like kind of a, a bubble down. Maybe not. Maybe it's too high up there and too small a difference, but let's try it anyway. Oh, I got burned. <laughs> That's what you get when you don't build things square. It's like all the sides are, you know, within a foot, foot and a half of each other and when I milled this, this is a long log. I cut the end off, cut a couple feet off because why mill the whole thing? I measured one side here, added on three inches or so, cut the log off. I didn't mill the other side, the matching side. It doesn't match because this whole thing isn't square. Crap Ola. All right, gotta go find another log to mill. Only one of these is long enough. I said that board stretcher. Ah, uh, you gotta plug that in. I'll have to find a log. 
Well, before I uh, put too much more weight on the roof, uh, putting the shingles and stuff, I think I'm going to put some more supports in here. I think I might throw in here. Uh, I need something just because that screen, that roll of screen is going to be one solid piece all the way across there, and I'm afraid it'll sag. It might need a little more support in the middle. So I might as well just put a another log, cedar log right there. Use that. Same thing on the other side. Might as well make it support. It doesn't hurt to support anything else. And then when I'm up there, I do feel the whole thing. If I really get it moving, I can feel the whole thing shake. I didn't know how much, what kind of supports I was going to need on here. And that's why I did it backwards and just built this all first. And now I'll throw the supports in. But the big thing with this is I don't want anything breaking up the view, the panoramic view. Because there's nothing here but forest 360. And I'd rather not have some more big supports all over the place. So I got an old... Uh, wire rope from the winch on the four-wheeler when I put a synthetic uh, winch cable on there. I got the old one so I'm going to cut that up. I got some turnbuckles and you'll see you'll see what I got planned and it's not really a plan it's just uh, dealing with uh, what what's available. But each one of these corner posts needs something going here and something going here. Of course you could go from here all the way to here the other way make an X that would probably give it the most support but I don't want that crossing. Look at that window. There's no way I want to mess that up. So I was thinking about just log supports here. That even takes away from the view. So I'm going to I'm gonna cut up that old winch cable and use it in each corner there. So it'll just be a little line you'll barely see, hopefully. And I guess since there's a, port, a support here, I'm also going to put a cable all the way across. That'll keep things from sagging and the roof from bowing down. So let's go find some logs for this. I'm going to use these. Those are pine. I kind of like the cedar for the poles since they're going to still get wet and uh, rain down all year, snow down and stuff. This one might work. I don't think it has to be too robust. Yeah, let's use that guy. Oh yeah, that's solid. <sighs> Not quite straight enough. It's going to have the screen stapled to the side of it or something so I guess it needs to be somewhat straight and that is not straight. I think I know where to look though. Plenty of logs like that right here. We're going to need something to pound that in with. Yeah, baby. I like to 
leave this stuff to peel till the end because uh, you take the bark right off it and then try to handle it. They're so slippery. So that's pretty good. I'll probably put a couple screws in it for no reason and then uh, we'll peel and get that other one in real quick. Where did I put my hammer? Well, I'd double them if I had more, but I just think that'll be good for now. Always Ryobi if you can. Whew, that'll do. Just screw them in temp temporarily like that. Get the angle right and then go back and uh, put the bolts in. I'm trying to put these at a 45 degree angle, not that it really matters that much, but there's nothing to uh, nothing to measure from up here to get a 45. So I've been using this, set it at 45 and put the level on top so you can get the bubble in the middle and then sight down the angled part and see if you get pretty close to 45. Works pretty well. Nice. Little more. Perfect. Got to tune them. <laughs> Crap. That's not going to work.
That ought to do. And you got some place to hang stuff. Like your jock strap or garter belt. Well, I had to knock down one more tree for another board for this side. You know, when everybody uh, re-roofs a house, you always get a little extra. I don't know what it is, two, three, five percent extra, and everybody ends up with several packs of shingles, it seems like. So you can go on uh, Craigslist or uh, Facebook or whatever and find shingles all over the place for sale as long as you're not shingling any, anything too big. You can get them basically free. I bought these like, I don't know, 15 or 20 packs of shingles a year ago for a hundred bucks. And that was enough to do the Deer Castle and this gazebo and probably some other stuff. So it's, uh, it's a nearly free way to build if you plan ahead a little bit. This is what's left over after building the uh, Deer Castle for a hundred bucks plus uh, some tar paper. So pretty good deal. Gotta little do a little bit of that if you got homemade lumber. Chainsaw made lumber anyway. Take some of the steep edges off. Takes a pretty fancy guy to uh, plane the roof boards on the top before it puts uh, shingles on it. But I mean, <laughs> they're pretty fancy. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> But that felt really weird. <laughs> it was a very strange feeling. That big old knot hole just popped out. It was right underneath the ball of my foot. I felt something shift and then I <laughs> heard a thunk a second later. I guess I can glue that back in from uh, later on from the bottom, huh? Not enough of my free tar paper. It's gonna be like five feet short. Whew. I'm a half pack kind of guy. Not a whole one. Habitat for Humanity Restore. Basically free. Oh, this, this box. That was 90, 97 cents. Oh, that was when it was new. I think these were, I don't know, I got a huge giant box of all this stuff thrown together for like four or five bucks. And what's missing out of this one are the nails I did uh, the deer castle with, so.
tricky. Chopped it up in pieces, stretching it to the very last inch. So I don't have to make a trip out just to buy two feet of tar paper. Oh my gosh, it's just like not quite. Oh, <laughs> one more scrap. All right, we're gonna make this work. Lots of layers, lots of layers. This is what we're gonna have left over right here, you know, in case we need it for anything. <laughs> oh, it's too hot. Ooh. Well, I don't know if it's the time of year or what, but the mosquitoes have really started to disappear and for some reason up this high there are no flies, no nothing. And I even considered taking my shirt off for once this year, but you imagine the sunburn you could get the first and only time you take your shirt off one summer and stand on a roof. <laughs> Probably not worth it. I'll just take a, a break every minute and a half and hang out in the shade here. If I was smart, I would go do something else and come back here this afternoon, but there's no place to go that's any cooler, so there's not a breath of wind either. Holy moly. Oh, that's nice. Well, that's exactly what this thing's for, right? To get out of the sun. Man, it feels good in here. Get it like one more week, one more week and it'll be screened in. I'll just be napping here for weeks. Just out flat, dead to the world, three to four weeks and then the temperature should drop. You know, one thing I noticed uh, coming up the ladder, since this whole thing wasn't square, I think I mentioned this in an earlier video, the four uprights aren't in a square. They go from that side and then they get wider on this side. So if you look down the roof from right here on the ladder, you can actually see the roof starts like this and it ends up like this. It's got a, it's got this curve to it. <laughs> it's kind of cool. It's either that or make the roof ridge go up and the base get wider. So I don't know, over that span, it was not a problem to make the boards bend just a tiny bit. I didn't even notice it, but yeah, standing up here, you can see it looks like a it's flared out. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's how the pros would do it anyway. Makes the arm shake. Yeah. I hate cutting the end of shingles off with a knife. That's so much better, even though it just toasted my new blade. I don't know when the last time it was that, that I uh, suggested you don't try to learn anything from my videos. I'm sure anybody that really knows how to do any of this stuff is just freaking out right now watching me do it all the wrong way, but I don't know how to do it and I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. Plus, I'm listening to... Uh, an interview on quantum mechanics and they're talking about the branching of the wave function and whatnot and my brain is basically it's basically just like a a puddle of warm jello inside my skull right now so i'll use that as an excuse 
for doing this all wrong. It's not really wrong. This is just like uh, this freestyle. This freestyle roofing. Freestyle Roofers of America. It's a new group I just started. Man, I was going to take a short day today and work on uh, editing some videos. Figured I'd just run up here and uh, finish the roof real quick and then take the rest of the day off. It's already 6 o'clock. But I'm not coming back up here tomorrow, so I'm going to get this done. Getting pretty close. <laughs> that Schrodinger. He sure had a silly cat, you know what I mean? <laughs> Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Never mind. Done. Express route. Anybody down? Okay. Could be worse. Good enough for me. Well, to hold the rain and some of the sunshine out. That'd be nice. Man, this is like progress and stuff. I'm gonna tear this thing open and uh, see about how exactly to hang this screen up. Living out here year round in a tent, it does leave me kind of wanting like one really comfortable place to sit. Because even editing videos, you know, I spend 20 to 30 hours probably a week on the computer just editing in my tent in essentially like a patio furniture kind of chair, which isn't super comfy. I will make some uh, furniture and stuff for in here, maybe some cedar furniture. I got I saved out a couple of really nice boards to make a table and uh, maybe some shelves or something. But the more I think about finishing it off like that, it's a very fine line I'm walking here between... Like I'm out here because I love camping and it's all I really ever want to do. But as soon as I figure, as soon as I start packing up my stuff to go camping <laughs> from here, then I'll know I've crossed the line and I need to back off a little bit, you know, like burn something down or I don't know. But it sure is nice having this thing dried in. Now I can leave my tools and stuff in the middle of here and uh, don't have to worry about the occasional rain shower hitting us. So I'm going to leave you guys till next week uh, when you come back in what, seven days, the next video will come out. This thing should be all screened in, I hope. I think I'm going to have to, I've got a couple cedar logs laying around. I might have to chainsaw mill those up. So I have some lumber to trim the edge of this where the screen's going to attach. And then I just realized I also have to make a door over there. So somehow build a door from some chainsaw milled lumber. I don't know. I haven't figured it out and I'm probably not going to figure it out. I'll just start milling and nailing stuff together. And if you can go in and out somehow, then I will have won. So thanks for watching, guys. Like it if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. Thanks.